The malonic ester synthesis sounds like it's a reaction that is used to synthesize malonic ester, when in fact it's used to synthesize a carboxylic acid. The starting material for this reaction is malonic ester, so this molecule right here is commonly referred to as malonic ester, and no matter what type of carboxylic acid you'd like to synthesize, you will always start this reaction with malonic ester. The malonic ester synthesis, uh, as I said, synthesizes a carboxylic acid with either one or two alkyl groups on the alpha carbon of the carboxylic acid. You get to choose. There's a total of up to five steps in this reaction. Step one and two are repeated if you would like to add two alkyl groups to the alpha carbon of the carboxylic acid. So if you only wanted to add one alkyl group to the carboxylic acid, you would not need this step three and four. You would only need steps one and two, and then the last step, H3O+. I'm going to show you for the, the mechanism for this reaction because when you just look at it like this, it seems like there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. The reaction is actually pretty straightforward. Now, the base that we want to use for this reaction in steps one and three is always going to be the ethoxide base. And this is for the same reason that we need to match the OR group with the OR minus base in the Clayson condensation reaction. We don't want to have to worry about swapping out um, any of the OR groups in the middle of this reaction. Just like most of the reactions that we've been looking at, the very first thing that's going to happen is removing an alpha uh, hydrogen and forming an enolate. And this is our enolate. I'm going to not draw the second alpha hydrogen on this enolate just to save space. Looks like I lost an oxygen there. This guy is then going to attack our first alkyl halide. So whatever R group is that we would like to put on this, let's say we wanted to do just like a methyl group. So we would use CH3Br. This is an SN2 reaction, so this is going to go after the carbon and then break the carbon-bromine bond and we have now successfully added our first alkyl group. If we wanted to add a second alkyl group, then we would just repeat those first two steps. So now I'm going to redraw that alpha hydrogen and we're going to use ethoxide a second time. It's going to grab the second alpha hydrogen, make another enolate, And once this enolate has been formed, we can bring in another alkyl halide. I'm going to use something different this time. This time I'm going to use ethyl bromide. So we can have two different alkyl groups. Although you could use another of the exact same alkyl group if you wanted, if you wanted the two groups to be the same. And this again is an SN2 reaction. And now at this point we have put both of the alkyl groups on the alpha carbon. So there they are. Uh, so now in the, the next part of the reaction, the last step, so step number five, we add some acid H3O+. This acid is going to hydrolyze the ester groups. This is a reaction that you learned in the carboxylic acid derivative information. It's going to, the H3O+, will convert the, both of the ester groups into carboxylic acid groups. And so I'm going to redraw. Instead of having a diester, we now have a dicarboxylic acid like that. And this dicarboxylic acid that we've synthesized is going to undergo a type of rearrangement. It's going to be easier for me to illustrate the rearrangement if I redraw this carboxylic acid. So what I'm going to do is erase a little bit of what I've already drawn and redraw it. And specifically what I'm going to do is rotate the, uh, the, the perspective or the angle that I have drawn this carboxylic group right there. So instead of having both of the carbon oxygen double bonds pointing in the same direction, I'm going to turn one of them around. Uh, and remember, this is a single bond, so this bond is free to rotate, so this is a valid thing. And I'm going to have the OH group sticking up like that. So I'm just redrawing it from a different perspective. And then I'm going to do one last thing. Instead of just um, condensing that OH group, I'm going to stretch out. I'm going to draw out that OH bond so we can see the whole entire thing. Uh, and this is going to be easier for us, for me to explain what happens next. So the next thing that's happened looks a lot like a Diels-Alder reaction. You can kind of visualize a six-membered ring right here like that. 
Um, what we're going to do is just like in Diels Alder, where I'm going to start with this carbon oxygen double bond, I'm going to move its electrons clockwise. I'm going to go to the next bond and move its electrons clockwise. I'm going to go to the next bond and move its electrons clockwise. And let's take a look at what that gives us. So this is going to be a little, a little bit crazy to draw. I'm going to start with the HO, the OH group right there. And um, what we've done here is taken this carbon oxygen double bond and we moved this or we turned this into a single bond. So there's the oxygen right there. This is now a double bond right there. And it still has the uh, ethyl group and the methyl group on it. So we'll draw those guys in. This carbon carbon single bond has been broken. So it's not there anymore. Carbon oxygen double bond is still there. So that's this that I just drew. This carbon oxygen single bond is now a double bond. And then last but not least, this carbon or oxygen hydrogen single bond has been broken, but it has been moved over to this oxygen. So now it's right here. Now this looks like a mess. There's a lot of stuff to look at right there. I'm gonna pull this off to the side. This, uh, this guy right here is the CO2 molecule. So it's just going to um, bubble right up out of solution. It's gone. And what we're left with is this thing right here, which I'm going to redraw because it just looks kind of funny. So I shouldn't draw an arrow there. It's not a reaction. I'm just kind of redrawing it to make it look a little nicer. Like this. And this just looks kind of like a crazy enol. It is an enol, but it's just got two OH groups on it. Just like any enol, it is going to undergo tautomerization. Uh, and the tautomerization is going to be a hydrogen shift to give us a more stable molecule. So the hydrogen from either one of these OH groups is going to shift down to this position right here. And the carbon-carbon double bond is going to shift up to a carbon-oxygen double bond. And after all of that, here is our carboxylic acid.